Monopsony, take two. Hey everybody, still doing factor markets, now we're doing Monopsony. I know, strange word, Monopsony. Sounds like Monopoly, why? Because it's a lot like Monopoly, okay? Monopoly is when a business has, is the only one that's selling a product, okay? They're the only one selling the product. A Monopsony is when the business is the only one hiring a particular skill set. Now, this is kind of hard to find in the real world, but one thing we can find is in U.S. history, we had things called factory towns. There would be like a steel mill that would open up somewhere and a town would be built around that steel mill. But that steel mill was the only steel mill, and so they were the only ones hiring that particular type of, la of, of skill, okay? So they would have market power over that skill because they were the only ones hiring people that had those steel-making skills. So, with all that said, we've got a monopsony, one business is the only one that's hiring uh, laborers out there. So here we go. I want you to understand this weird thing that's going to happen in this graph. In this graph, we're going to see that the marginal factor cost curve is going to split away from the supply curve. It should kind of remind you from a monopoly how the MR splits away from demand. But in this particular situation, the marginal factor cost is going to split away from the supply curve. Okay? so. To understand this, I've got a table. Some of y'all might remember some of those tables from those other videos, okay? It's not gonna be that bad though, okay? Very quickly, this combination, wage and quantity supply, is the supply of labor curve. The quantity and marginal factor cost column, these two guys make up the marginal factor cost curve. So that's what we wanna keep an eye on, the relationship between the supply curve and the marginal factor cost curve. Now we're gonna say at a wage of four, nobody wants to work for us, okay? So the quantity supplied is gonna be zero. Total cost, okay? Or at least the total variable cost, if you will, zero. Marginal factor cost, not even applicable right now. But if we raise the wage to five, we'll get somebody. We're gonna get one person that'll work for us at a wage of five. So the quantity supplied is one, the total cost, Five dollars, what's that marginal factor cost? What was the additional cost that the firm incurred for hiring one more worker? Pretty simple, zero to five, it's five dollars. Now, if we take a look at this, quantity of one, we've got a wage of five, we've got an MFC of five, it looks like the supply curve and the MFC curve, same point, at a quantity of one, but let's see if it stays that way. If we wanna hire two workers, we're gonna have to raise the wage again from five dollars to six dollars. That's going to get us two workers working for us. Six times two, $12. That's our total cost. What was the marginal factor, marginal factor cost? Well, five to 12. We went from five to 12. The additional cost was $7. And now we want to pause for a second. We want to see that the supply curve and the MFC, they're not the same at a, at a Q of two, at a quantity of two. We've got a quantity of two. We've got a wage of six. We got an MFC of seven, they split apart from each other. Let's keep going, let's fill this in. Wanna hire another person, we're gonna have to go to a wage of seven. We go to a wage of seven, we'll get three people working for us. Seven dollars times three, 21 dollars, maybe an hour, you know, if that's the way you wanna think about it. So our total cost is 21. 12 to 21, our additional cost, our marginal factor cost, our additional cost for hiring one more person, nine dollars. Let's keep going. We want to get another per person working for us. To do that, we're going to have to raise the wage some more. Raise it up to $8. We're going to get four people working for us. Eight times four, 32. What's the additional cost? Okay, 21 to 32. The additional cost of hiring one more person, that's what the MFC is, is 11. One more to do, okay? We want to hire one more worker. Raise the wage again. Raise it to $9. We get five workers working for us. Nine times five, 45. What's the additional factor cost? What's the additional cost of adding one more factor of production, which happens to be a laborer right now? 32 to 45, pretty simple math. 13, what do we see? Let me kind of highlight it for you, okay? At a quantity of one, we got five and five supply curve in the MSC, same place. But then at a quantity of two, wage six, MFC seven. Quantity of three, wage seven, MFC nine. We're totally seeing a split between these two. Um, at a quantity of four, wage eight, MFC 11. 
quantity of five, wage nine, MFC of 13. They've totally split away. What curve is above the, uh, the other one? Well, pretty simple to see, guys. Output of two, wage six, that's our supply curve, MFC seven. The MFC is actually above the supply curve at a quantity of two. Quantity of three, wage seven. Remember, quantity and wage gives us the supply curve. Wage seven, but MFC nine. Once again, MFC above the supply curve. So let's go draw it. Let's put it on the graph, okay? We've got our information. We've shown you mathematically that if we have market power in the labor market, a monopsony, that MFC splits away from the supply curve. Let's see what that looks like. We go to our graph, supply of labor, straightforward. Just draw it upward sloping. That's the supply of labor. I should have drawn that linear, pretend that it's linear. Now I want to draw my MFC. At all of these Q's, right, at all of these Q's, I want my MFC values to be higher than my wage values, okay? So my MFC needs to be higher. So MFC, there it is. Pretty straightforward. Supply of labor, MFC. MFC has broken away from supply. In perfect competition, in a labor market that's perfectly competitive, supply and MFC are the same. But in a monopsony, MFC breaks away. How about the marginal revenue product? Remember, that's just the demand for labor. It's always downward sloping. So here we go. Demand for labor is the marginal revenue product of labor. Now we've got our graph. We've got our monopsony. What do we want to find out? How many people we're going to hire. So we simply go to MFC equals MRP. Okay, let me write that on the board. Okay, we're going to go find where MRP sub labor equals marginal factor cost of labor. Why? Very important thing. Why? The MRP of labor is the marginal benefit of labor to the firm. The marginal factor cost of labor is the marginal cost of hiring labor to the firm. We're going to hire as long as the MRP sub L, there's our MRP curve, is above the MFC sub L. MRP of L above MFC of L. Keep hiring. Hiring all the way to right here. Q profit max. That's the number of people we're going to hire. We're almost done. We've almost done all the work that we need to do. But there's one last important thing to do. The wage. What's the wage? What's the wage we're going to pay? Now, if you remember from the monopolies, we would always say, what's the price we're going to charge? The price is based on the demand curve. Absolutely right. But when it comes to factor markets, what's the wage we're going to pay? That's based on the supply curve. Let me show you. Imagine that we charge this wage right there. Okay? That wage. What would be the outcome? Okay? Well, <clears throat> We go right over here from this wage over to here, that horizontal distance, quantity demanded, because I'm hitting the demand curve, the marginal revenue product. That'd be the quantity demanded by the firm. Now, that wage all the way to there, that horizontal distance, quantity supplied of labor. What does that mean? We would have a surplus of laborers. We would have a line of laborers at that particular wage. So what are we going to do? We're profit maximizers. We're the business now. This is theory of the firm. We're not the worker. We're the firm. We can pay a lower wage. We can begin to reduce that wage and reduce that wage until we come all the way down to there. So the wage that we are going to pay is based on the supply curve. So I just went down. Look at that supply curve. Found the MR, MRP, MFC intersection point. Went down to there. That's my supply curve. That's the wage. I'm not paying that one. I'm paying the lower wage. They've got wage power. They have power over wages. And once again, we're talking about the business. The business is a profit maximizer. We might not love this, okay? We might not love this result, but they're going to have the ability to pay a lower wage based on the supply curve. We found everything that we needed to. We've got the wage they're going to pay. We've got the amount they're going to hire. That's a monopsony. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.